What is a more appropriate term for that sound? The glug glug or the glack glack? Let's get down to the meat of the pod. <laughs> the gawk? The, the gawk? The gawk gawk 5000? Gawk gawk gawk. The glack? What the f*** is glack? Glack. <laughs> <laughs> he says words that are worse than just f You couldn't drive your finger up your rectum, <laughs> sir. So Speaking of white, did you I had an Alfredo. <laughs> Alfredo or whatever. <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen the price of Alfredo's? Alfredo. Alfredo's not the f feel old yet? This is the price of Alfredo's now. <laughs> World news brought to you by Colin Gaddis. Small cocks are back. Tiny dicks might become popular again, according to experts. Experts? Like right, small uh, experts. small dick scientists. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We're back. Back like a spine. Who, who said that line? Back like a spine? Yeah. Ludicrous? Lil, was it? Lil Wayne? Back like a spine. Genius. One of the best rappers ever. That's good. I took well badly though to the, the lean. Huh? The lean. He was too fond of the dirty sprite. I know. The guy couldn't have a more cr hoarse voice. Yeah. That interview he's doing where he's like, Sugar, I'm married to the game. I'm married to the game. My name Lil Wayne. <laughs> I, I don't even mean I, to rap sometimes. I can't even clock out. What the f*** are we talking about? <laughs> Welcome to the Bomb Squad podcast. Uh, a friendly reminder to get yourself onto the Patreon. Yes. Because that's where it happens. And by... It's the inner circle. When, it, when, it, when I say that's what happens, I mean uh, that's where the bonus episode goes. Yes, every week. Every week. Uh, as many regular podcasts as there are, there are an equivalent amount in... Uh, bonus content. Bonus content. We've got a live podcast coming up, 6th of June. Yeah, very exciting. Uh, there's exclusive... 6th of July. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> He'll fix it in post! <laughs> Just a Japanese guy going, the July uh, over the top of it. <laughs> Live podcast, 6th of July. Poster. There's a poster. <laughs> We've got 27 of them on sale after I steal a couple. Yeah, super exclusive. Do we sign them? Let's sign them. First, well, first gig. I'll sign both of our names because you write like a tar. I, I have a You right. write like a left handed <laughs> child who's blind. That's all right. I'll Good. <laughs> We can't all write Pride and Prejudice fucking swirly like yours is. No, that's just fucking regular, I'd write. No, it's not. That's not. You need to do one of those, just like, uh, our McCamba just like AM and just go yeah, like that. Yeah, like 100%. Like Mac you know, McGregor just be like getting sucked off and signing, <laughs> On a boat. And signing posters, just like, who gives a fucking flying <laughs> fuck? Um, uh, yeah, we've got the live podcast coming up. We have exclusive, there's t-shirts, there's hats, there's posters. And uh, the boys are swerving that tax man like a motherfucker. Oh, why? We're selling it for cash. Cooking books. <laughs> selling it for cash. Say none. Probably will be able to take hard because it's, uh, you know, we're not going to turn your money down. But yes, we will uh, be taking cash. Crypto. No. Sign that we the yeah, I signed that one that stays on the wall. There you go. Oh, she out there. That's go the ahead. One. You sign it there. We'll see. Go ahead. You Life sign reveal. it. Oh Jesus! He's got the old, he's got the, old, <laughs> the the lobster grip. That genuinely looks like Eddie just fucking ruined one of the posters on him. That's fucking legit. That's business. There you go. Wow. The poster just went down in price. <laughs> Signed by Anne Frank. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. no wait, it was Helen Keller. It was the dumb and the blind one. <laughs> <laughs> dumb, what a fucking <laughs> of the upgrade of all the of all the like uh, you know like words that go out of fashion. Spastic. Yeah, <laughs> you know that was a legit word kicking about. <laughs> dumb, <laughs> retarded. It was a proper word. Yeah. Dumb's dumb's hung about there, has it? Oh, I dumb still in circulation. Dumb, what does dumb mean? Deaf and blind? Mm. Or dumb is can't talk? Is it? Yeah, mute. Dumb. Yeah. That's rough, man. That's rough stuff. <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> Dumb. Because uh, it is it is a regular word. Like, yeah, like re retardant. The retardant is... Retardant? <laughs> retardant, yeah. Flame retardant. That's a real word. I have to get the past man on for that. Yeah. There's, these are all real words that you can't use anymore. I think retard's coming back, though. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> uh, yeah, if it if it meant a thing and then it progressed to meaning another thing, yeah. it can then mean another thing. It was in a dip there for a while. This, for example? Well, yeah. Retarded. <laughs> <laughs> this handwriting? Hang on, let's see yours. Retarded. No <laughs> We've taken up all the good real estate anyway. We're <laughs> <laughs> big <laughs> fucking. Right <in> <laughs> I'll start over here. Look at that. I but that's, you have a graphic design degree for fuck's sake. I mean, you don't graphic design me with, with a pen. I but. Boom, roasted. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking slam dunk. That looks good, doesn't it? Great. What we need, we need to get ourselves a, I think I have one at home, like a silver pen. Oh, yeah. Get the old silver on it. Yeah. Is there a signature trainer you can go to? It's Some called, called, called school, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> there's bound to be able. There's bound to be a whole uh, like generation of kids. Just they're, they're just like we're not even gonna bother teaching you how to write. Yeah. Can you type? Yeah. Type away. Getting the old AI. Getting the old AI. You know. Hey Google, write my name on a poster. It's actually getting. I had a friend that came over for the weekend, and now they're going to Berlin, and they got AI. They told it what it was. So it's like you're a trendy, you know, travel agent. Yeah. And you're booking a four day trip for a couple who are in their twenties. They enjoy thrifting, graffiti, museums. Do us a four day plan and it was scary how good and accurate it was. That's handy. So fuck a genius like. I wonder you know, can, can you say things to it like I would like to visit these places in America, bring me up the appropriate flights and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. The best connecting route through it because you have to like you have to tell the ai you have to give it a personality essentially right and then it operates off that that is scary can you give it an accent no what's that day you know it goes all goes all hipster voice what's that day you want to go berlin <laughs> oh, you want to get pissed on or something like that what you want oh yeah that's a good voice old pimp that'd be funny if you were what's doing up, like baby? the botrous holiday ideas yeah where can I get pulled down, France? Can, where can I kill a friend <laughs> in Amsterdam? <laughs> and it just gives you a list of places to How go. How to hide a body? Quick. Quick. Stat. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there fucking twiddling your thumbs waiting for it to come up with an answer. Come on, you fucking bitch. It takes like 10 seconds. <sighs> it's too long. That's too long for me to get involved. And Snapchat has a built-in AI feature now. Maybe I should like get talk it, to it. Maybe I should get an AI and just be like, here's the amount of uh, stuff I have to sort out today. Mm -hmm. what's the best way to tackle that and i yes. tell them and then it just fucking that's the personality i'm going to tell it to have very efficient business person there you go and just ask it stuff yeah so yeah that's what i'm gonna do aaron had a big show um you got last week we the show hadn't happened and we were like let's let's put it out there in the universe how it's gonna go manifestation works manifestation well yeah what can go wrong well yeah what we did was uh kind of what happened I would say this, the scariest thing l last week for you was whenever you nearly thought you were getting the cold. Yeah. That was scary. But don't worry, I got the echinacea in me. Got the echinacea. Still don't know what that is. It's just like, it's what you take when you feel a dose coming on and then nature just kicks into full gear, sorts you out. It's great. What's, what, is echinacea like a plant or is it a mixture mm -hmm. of things? It's just like a plant fucking, I don't know, bro, I don't work in a lab, you know? You should have been one of those spokespersons. <laughs> Spokespeople. <laughs> you know, no. when COVID first came out and they're all like vaccines, masks, and you're like, my ma has this. Yeah. Echinacea. Yeah. Get it in the will kill any bat dose you got. Going it did. On. It killed hers, dude. She had an old dose coming along. <laughs> and then. Kill her, dude. <laughs> she dropped two of them, stone dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Death by echinacea. Uh, was your ma dropping any pills on Saturday? No, she was just on the gins. Faded off the gins. Yeah. Faded off the gins. She Gordon. was pretty faded, yeah. Was she? Yeah. 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 Just chatting shade to Mickey for about 20 minutes in Lavras. I love the way you were trying to coordinate getting getting your mother on stage for the photo. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone someone had the information that they were like, oh, the only thing she said was, you know, sometimes if she's been sitting a while, she might get a wee bit s stiff, you know, and needs yeah. a, bit, a bit of time to loosen up. And I was like, stiff or faded off the fucking <laughs> rhubarb gin player? <laughs> I got a wee bit stiff. Pissed, you mean? Right, well, she had to like, you know, kind of wheel it in a wee bit. Until she got the picture, yeah. and she was just off the lead then. Like. Uh, she was warming up backstage. You know. You know, I seen her do a couple of burpees, stretching out. Yeah. Shout out to Dom from Shine, by the way. He coordinated that very well. Because I was just like, yeah, she has obviously osteoporosis, so she might have a little bit of a difficult time getting up and going up flights of stairs and shit like that. Um, So he just kind of came in, swooped her up whenever I was doing my last bit. And then I kind of looked side stage to make sure she was actually there. And she was. She was fucking loosening up her neck. Oh. Yeah. But I'm glad we got that done. That's one for the mantelpiece. And uh, thank God I was there. Yeah. Capturing that. Yeah. You did. There's a nice bit of video got there now. Did you like it? Very nice. Put the phone on 4K, 24 frames. Lovely. 
cinematic. And I, I don't know if you've seen. I I had a video the other day that was so well shot. Some one of your friends came in and tagged you, <laughs> being like good man. I was like, hey, fuck, I'll do it. To be fair, my mom was like, hey, that was a lovely video. <laughs> I was like, I didn't do what video was that? It was the one that black and white one of me just ate an ice cream in the top of the forest, just faffing about. Yeah. God. Very well done. Thank you, Nan. I appreciate that. Mm. Well, but I, it was, <laughs> it was good. It was a good night. Did we get talking about the rage room yet? Did we talk about that in the last podcast? No, because that was shot, I think, on the Thursday. Yeah. So the other, the other promo video was me and you went to that rage room and poured it down. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy was like, "You didn't really do a lot of rage in there." Yeah. And you're like, "Listen, bro, I'm trying to shoot a video, but also like, what are we talking here? Do you want me to kill someone?" Yeah. How much raging do you want me to do? But when we got the video, it went. That was the fun part. Like when we got the shots, then me and you just sort of put on about a little John Lee said boys and went to town in the bed and a desk of drawers. I know there was a lot of laughing done because you, you were in the you were in the full hazmat suit, yeah, with a mask on, and then I just got too excited and just got jumped right in with the shorts and trainers, yeah. So I know because I was like, smash. they were doing scenes where like I was fucking smashing these bottles and just shards of glass would fly at you, and I'd be like, Jesus Christ! You oh yeah, right? like I stand there with a the camera now like this, and then he would go like, Dish, and I'd be like, Oh, cool, yeah, cool. it's under my hat and then my shoes and everything. There was a couple of wee bits of blood just running out of me, you know, like tiny fine bits of glass just hit you. Yeah, and, and the way you right? reference it too it was just so you were you were so casual, like, Oh, I'm bleeding. <laughs> right, stand over there, get over there. <laughs> But you have to ham it up when you're doing those shots. You have to be like, ah, oh yeah, ah. and, and not like, just like. Psh. And you in a rage room was exactly what I thought it would be, which is just short bursts of mental aggression. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like he'd he'd be like walking around with a sledgehammer, and then like I'd turn around, and next thing he's fucking triple H it into a grand piano. <laughs> the piano was getting cracked, and then of course someone was like, "You couldn't fucking swing," you know. My granny has harder swings than that. Aye, uh, fuck off. Aye, uh, fuck off. Wait, you should see me smash a piano. Uh, Shut the fuck up. Yeah, people slobber. <laughs> also, old pianos, rock solid. Oh, aye. absolutely rock solid. Smash the light, like full sledgehammer to the keys, and they just went clink. Yeah, and barely moved. And I was like, well, this is gonna take a bit of work here. The main shot now was that TV. We had to get that. We only had one TV, and we only had one shot at it. Yeah. I was nervous now. You showed me how to maneuver a sledgehammer. Useful. And then just one good old whack at it. It was cool watching it, actually. Yeah, we had to be like, knowing him, you know, he's going to like... Fuck it up. Let, like, let go of the hammer and just hit the screen <laughs> and chip it. And then it's not going to look as good or something. So yeah. I, was, I was like, walking through it, like, just let it let it slide through your hand. Yeah. Bang. Let it one and hit it as hard as you can. Yeah. And those old TVs sound like a fucking petrol or sound like a fucking pipe bomb. It was crazy. Whatever's in them, the gas or whatever, it just goes, <gasps> just all smokes out of it then. But yeah, it is therapeutic. Like, it is. Aye. As soon as I smashed that first bottle, I was like, oh, I give me 27 more of those. And shout out to our boy Ryan who let us in there. Mm-hmm. Not the guy I was expecting at all to be letting you into a rage room. Yeah. He was wearing chinos and a shirt. He had tech startup vibes. Yeah. You know, welcome to my new app. We know we do this for the blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he had the, he's well-dressed, you know, nice guy. And then he's like, yeah, so if you want to follow me in here and just absolutely cut the fuck out of this TV with a hammer. But then maybe he is, you know, he does that shit so often that he just has zero rage in him and he's totally zen. Maybe. You know, he came across that way. I was expecting a guy to look like, you know, like he was in Slipknot. Yeah. And just be like, I need this. Yeah. For, for my mate, for up her, brother. <laughs> up her, this is where I fucking let it all out. Yeah, who needs a nice bath when you can just fuck up a grand piano? <laughs> no. Although I don't know, I mean, a bit of a nightmare job when so, like a team of people come in and absolutely destroy the place and then you have to just like clean it up for the next. Oh yeah, stag party in there would be a nightmare. Like, But that's, you, what, that's what the guy was saying to us. A lot of people, when it's a group of like lunatic lads, they're kind of like, we don't know, you know, they're like, do we smash these lights? Do yeah. we smash the computer on the way in? And all these like, you have to sort of tell them like, smash the stuff that's there for you. Yeah. You don't need to start smashing the barriers. They're ripping the fucking wires out of the walls and... Oh god! Yeah, I thought you just get some terrible news. No, it was Maureen texting me. We drove. We drove past them this morning. She was in that van as well. Yeah, a blacked out van. Nice. Angela singing like old McDonald. We drove past them, giving them the fingers. It was very <laughs> gangster. Uh, so back to the show. Great success. Great memories. Uh, pizza. We ordered some s- secret pizza. This motherfucker goes backstage. <laughs> right. 
with more people there to see, like more friends and family than I ever have known. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was like, I don't even know this amount of people, let alone f- immediate friends and family. And they fucking, they clap them in. And I by the way, I, nearly had a panic attack at that, by the way. I couldn't, just get, I couldn't get over that. I was like, this, pe- people love this guy. I went for like a pish and like came back. And then like my nephew was there and he'd be quite nervous. So I was like chatting him for a bit. And then I like went into the green room and everyone started clapping and all. And I was like, cause of the whole day of the show, like I went for lunch with uh, Ocean, who shouted to her, by the way, she fucking smashed it, singing at the start. Her boyfriend, we went for lunch came down to belfast bought a shirt last minute and then came straight to the venue did sound check and then it was basically time for the show so i had an ad since like 12 did the full show came off i swept my bag off and then like was like kind of weak maureen even said me it was like you should get some water in you and slice of pizza and i was like yeah you're totally right went for a pitch came back and everyone's like and i was like <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> it was too much fair play because you had a black t-shirt on and that Ralph Lauren shirt, yeah, and you'd sweated, and it was dark, but you oh, yeah. sweated through both of them. Oh yeah, I looked like Brock Lesnar in a fucking UFC fight. I was pink and just like glistening. Yeah, just sweating. There's like an old honey glazed fucking ham in the back. I touched it. You were just hot. Yeah, I didn't want to hug anybody. Everyone was like extended for a hug, and I'd be like, "You don't want none of this. Mm. You're gonna get pneumonia with the amount of sweat that'll come off of me." Gross. And then. Went to the old uh, after party in Lavery's DJ. Did the DJ John boy? Champagne being handed out. Oh, why? Do, you know do you know anything about that? Who am I, Drake? <laughs> 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 I had Michael from Lavery's was walking about with like the fucking tray of champagne. Could get over it. And I was like chatting to someone and I was like, don't mind if I do. Yeah. I was like, I put on two shows <laughs> in here a week for you, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and this motherfucker does not show that my <laughs> Uh, no it was great though um but it was it was was one of those nights where like you could have you could have easily just stayed all night and into the morning and had a brunch oh yeah everyone was so hyped and you know the 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 night ended it like and you know i don't know how your evening ended but we went to the hotel thinking we were going to get some drinks and bumped into well we were we just went in and fuck belfast anyway what a what a fucking part-time shitty city He's like, that's one o'clock now. See, just when the crack's getting up to <laughs> some level of decency there, we're just going to cut you off and fuck you in this street. And then you go to the hotel and you're like, can we get drinks to the room? And they're like, the, the guy's, you know, he, he was like from Mr. Dades. He's like, it's very, very sneaky. You know, he's like, there is no drink and no alcohol. So we're just in the hotel. Going, Who all went to the hotel? Me, Maureen, him and Fred. I, and like, we're just sitting there going like, what do we do? Like, for, And then, of course, we met a new friend, didn't we? The, oh, yeah. This girl from Derry, and she fucking, you know what I mean? She wouldn't fucking shut the fuck up the whole time. No harm to her. Like, she was, I thought you meant she was loaded. No, no, no. These no. were lips? No, no. She fucking, <laughs> she she was like, she was like fucking, uh, you know, this is when I get by therapy. Yeah. Two in the morning. Yeah. To strangers. No one else in the bar. And she's like, my partner, uh, her partner came in with a big bag of food. And he's like, are you sitting there? She's like, ah, and he's like, see ya. And he went up to the room with the chips. Good man. Good man. Love that. And I was like, fucking take her with you. <laughs> take her with you now. And then we just sat there fucking chatting. Like, none of them, none of those ones were like, you're stuck in that awkward position of she means well, but she's just having a chat. And it would be so awkward for to go, would you fuck off, would you? <laughs> also, probably a bit ignorant too, in a way. It know? is ignorant. <laughs> it is. Uh, you're perfectly within your rights to be like, do you know what there's plenty of other seats here i'm just trying to talk to my friends if you could just do that because what's happening is that's all, even worse we've all come here yeah you're not my friend we've all come here and uh, now we're all just listening to you yeah uh so off you fuck yeah you know what i mean but uh, off you fuck <laughs> off you fuck <laughs> but now we sat there for a long time and then she brought up something about a dog and she had to kick a dog and then fred was gonna glass her so i was like well guys got this overnight <laughs> why'd she have to kick the dog I don't know. She was telling you know, just like full life story. You get, yeah. you get the full life story, or whatever. You're trying to the fucking Derek Crowell Devil. Aye, and then he just you know started fucking lying to her and thought she thought we were all doctors and all. It was a fucking nightmare. But um, you told her you were doctors. Yeah, you were just like a doctor night out. Yeah, I don't know. Just started waffling to her. <laughs> what do you do? He's like a GP. Me sitting there in like shorts and all, like a fucking <laughs> pedophile. <laughs> He's a doctor, and I'm like, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was, and no drink, and when we just sat there, it was it was kind of like. It was annoying. I wasn't drunk enough. And then I went to bed just starving. I've done that before nights out, though, where you all just tell a wee white lie for no reason. Oh. You know what I mean? I've done that before in America a lot. 
What was the one you told me recently? You said to someone, oh, the, in, a, in a strip club? What was that again? You just were telling this fucking stripper about your wife and kids and divorce. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that was me. Mates fucked me over because we were in a strip club in Leeds, which, you know. Oh, I thought it was America. It's not exactly high end. And uh, they were like, uh, oh, yeah, he's like, he's just went for like a divorce and all. And the stripper's like, oh, no better time to get a lap dance. Um, I told that for the banter then and the American one. That's where you heard that. Where I was like, yeah, I'm just going for a divorce. I'm pretty emotionally cut up about it. But the one in Leeds, I got a lap dance and didn't do anything and just ended up sitting chatting with it all about David Attenborough. It was great. Nice having a conversation. You know what's nice for conversation? Someone having it with you, tits out, you know? Oh, the tits are right. She wasn't even more, like, more like a bra. No, no, no. Tits are right. But, you know, we're just having civil discourse. It was nice. You know? I don't need a lap dance. I want to emotionally connect to you while seeing that <laughs> Tell me about your father. Dead out. <laughs> I mean, what, did you get like cramps in your neck? Trying not to just be like. Oh, no. Well, that's the thing. Strip club. So all the mm. morality goes out the window. So you could just gawk a look and there's no judgment and then go back to. Oh, yeah. Blue Planet is a pretty banger. Yeah. Is it one of them things where you could just be like, do you know what? Just to save any awkwardness, let me get a good look at them. Yeah. Let me get a good look at them there. Nice. That's good. No. Anyway, did you see the episode where the snakes were chasing the lizard <laughs> on the beach? Fuck me. I was stressed out. <laughs> I got, I'm warm. I'm just going to take my dick out anyway, just for the crack. <laughs> Should they do first dates naked? That'd be amazing because it's already so autistic. So if they were naked, it would be a different level. There's, some, there's something weird about like um, the pressure of a romantic date. Like if the show was just called Chat to People with Dinner. Yeah. Do you know, I feel like I could go on a date with anyone. Yeah. Dates are fun. But then sometimes, you know, you'll sit down with someone and 20 seconds in, you're like, ah. Uh, there's going to be a hostage scenario, you know? Yeah. I don't want to be here, but it's not nice to just clock out that immediately. I think that's what that girl did us on Saturday night. Well, I think we got fucking uh, just attacked dated. Mm. Well, you'll get that in afters sometimes too. Like if you go to an after party and there's just some cunt has you in a corner and he's burning the ears of you about something and there's nowhere to go, you know, because everyone's already taken up space in the flat where they're having a conversation and the only thing you can really do is get up to go for a piss you don't need. <laughs> I've done that before. Just stand with your cock out, vaping. Yeah. Nice. And I'm like, I hope someone else has managed to get this cunt by yeah. the time I get out here. I, I talked about that the other a couple of episodes ago where I got cornered a wee bit at, at a party at uh, Maureen's in, you know, parents' house. And then her dad just walked past me and went, He got you then? <laughs> this guy I was talking to, He cornered you, did he? Fucking have a good one anyway. Best luck. <laughs> Fucking melter. Yeah. <laughs> and they just carried on. But quite the weekend. Do you have a good time in the port, you fucking bastard? Oh, I had a great time. Who lined up that Airbnb? Uh, so we booked it on booking.com, me and Tim, and then brought how, them how far ahead? Of, how far ahead of the trip? Like literally the week before. Wild. The week before. And it was nice, you know, it was nice to do a show like that. A lot of pressure, a lot of anxiety floating about. And then have it done, and then just fuck off down there for two days and do nothing. It was great. Unreal. Jealous. It was a nice time. Big, big style jealous. Tell you what, see, when the sun's out, not many places compared to the port. Just that old white money. Old Spread white mar- money. Spread some martinis by the water. Dinky donuts. You can't beat it. Do you think it's old white money? Port Rush? Is the, about, it might be the whitest place on earth. What about Port Stewart? Is <laughs> there, it, it's, it, all just a, it's all just a hive of white. You know what I mean? a hive of white? Yeah, well, it's not known for its, uh, you know... People of color. No. There's no BIPOX up there. No. No BIPOX in the port. <laughs> Tell you that. There's yeah. no black indigenous people of color. No. And Barry? Are you called, joking? There's just fellas called Jeff. <laughs> a lot of chino shorts knocking about there. A lot of, lot of like deck shoes, a lot of loafers. Oh, yeah. A lot of loafers. A uh, lot of people just like, you know, like an ice cream. By the way, nothing funnier then going by in a car and seeing a fella who doesn't think anybody's looking at him just fucking deep throat a honeycomb. Oh, yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. There's no good way to eat an ice cream. No, there's not. And you do, you know, it's like all those memes of those black guys like peeling a banana and eating it sideways and yeah. all that sort of shit. The best way to do it is with that whippy one is just go, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the best way to do it. But you have to be like, <laughs> 69 and 99. Yeah. <laughs> Some boy eating a fucking cone with a spoon, trying not to look gay. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow looking gay. I'd <laughs> <laughs> be way gay talking to a fucking cone with a spoon. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm not fucking just putting them in my mouth, man. But what, no, man. <laughs> it's kind of like iced coffee as well. It's hard to drink that and look manly. You know, I always give the weed toward with the with the ice now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You ever see those? Like, there's a girl like, she's like, ladies, is there a better sound than this or something? Yeah. She like shakes the coffee. I've seen so many. F- and it cuts to just a video of just. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything? Yeah, there was one where was like, hey guys, is there any better sound than this? And she's like walking down the hall in high heels. And then, yeah, it just cuts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what is a more appropriate term for that sound? The glug glug or the glack glack? Let's get down to the meat of the pod. <laughs> the gawk? The gawk, the gawk, gawk five thousand. The glack. What the fuck is glack? Glack. <laughs> That's what you said here afterwards. Glack, 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 glack. Glacky, glack, glacky. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh fuck. But yeah, good weekend. Happy with how it went. And do, do, you I, get, do you get any good fucking glack glack? Do I get any glack glack? <laughs> That's the name of the podcast. <laughs> Give me that glack glack. The glack glack 5000. <laughs> Imagine this. What? No, I had a few hom pumps. Was that me? Just me and a kebab. <laughs> Just. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> what the fuck in the morning, dude? <laughs> fucking lunatic. Uh, nah. No? No. Did you're t- too like you're did Tim get any splooges on us? No. Some near splooge? No, there was no pre marriage coming from him. <laughs> Thank God. Man, I was getting uh double suck I was getting the double glack glack <laughs> off two girls and I had to say, hey, quit it! I'm about to splooge. I'm about to boss for frick's sake. <laughs> I'm about to boss in her friggin' head. <laughs> I was friggin' in back. <laughs> it's always like, you know, like as long as long if you're a Christian, you're like, as long as you don't put D in for G, yeah. anything else goes. Yeah. You know? So he'd be like, flip me, I was getting I was getting double fisted <laughs> by these two young things. I had to say for frick steak. For frick for steak. steak. <laughs> Pump the brakes <laughs> before I ejaculate. Tim is my favorite guy to watch have road rage, because obviously he has to keep a Christian, but the anger and the venom's still there. So he'll just be driving down the road and someone will turn and he's like, are you friggin' blind? Yeah. <laughs> are you friggin' blind with your learning disabilities? <laughs> Madam. Yeah. He says words that are worse than just fuck. You couldn't drive your finger up your rectum, <laughs> sir. He'll just, he'll say words that you're like, this is objectively worse than just cursing. Oh yeah, because he's racist. You friggin' retard. <laughs> There's too many frickin' <laughs> coloreds in this town. <laughs> Have you said that in the port they give you a free meal? Uh, did you just be openly racist, lad? Here, take a double fucking poo bear. <laughs> good man. I gotta say, there's a Morelli's ice cream thing in our garage near us. Uh-huh. It's the, it is good. Like, Morelli's is unreal. Morelli's is the shit. Get that poo bear Belgian chocolate combo. It, it is nice now. Like, you know, it is... You know, if you were to feck away off, it's kind of like our Florida, you know, so get nice we retire a spot. Yeah. You just go down there and just live a life of flat whites and fucking, you know, succulent Italian meals. Succulent Chinese meals. You've been to Amici down there? A what? Amici. Restaurant? Yeah. No. Unreal. Nice Amici. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, what did you get? I had... Uh, <laughs> did you go into a high end... Speaking of, t- of white, did you- I had an Alfredo. <laughs> Alfredo or whatever. <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen the price of Alfredo's? <laughs> Alfredo. Alfredo's not the fucking feel old yet. This is the price of Alfredo's now. <laughs> it it pound. <laughs> uh, on a test bar, don't even chat to me. And then I had. I'm definitely gonna fuck this up. So it's uh, <laughs> garlic prias. <laughs> <laughs> I swear my cock is folded up in three here. Uh, Shishi ship. Uh, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> I had it so it's like it's <sighs> a the don't say it. I'll try and say it, but it's a fucking. Tom- this particular Italian dish is a, a slice of tomato with a big old dollop of what was the cheese and then a bit of pesto mozzarella. 
mozzarella and it was uh caprice yeah was that right caprice salad caprice salad there you go yeah. lovely to yep <laughs> i'm so sorry Fuck i'm so sorry shit! That's why I sometimes don't like paying for Italian food. Because you think you can make it better yourself? Well, a fucking, you know, like anybody can make raw tomato with a slice of mozzarella. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It is tasty, though. Do you know who makes a bad one of them? Who? Dutch Frank. Makes a bad one? Or makes, like, like real bad, you know. Oh, like yeah. a good one. Nice. Yeah, he's good at that shit. He's good at that. Did anyone get anything ex- extravagant down there? I, I Lucas got, like, a fucking, some shape with muscles in it. That look pretty tasty. Oh god, nice. Uh, yeah, I'd love to be able to eat shit like that, but I, I just can't. No, I had I tried oysters, and I don't know why. I think that's one of the things people kind of pretend to like, because it was just okay, and it wouldn't fill a hole in your tooth. Oh well, it's not a fucking. No one's getting a main of. No one's being like, <coughs> hey, bring us forty eight oysters there. I but I got twelve of them, and I was like, you have to glug glug them too, and then they're just that's just whatever. Yeah. And it's not like mental tasty. Like sushi, I get. Sushi's like, you know, every bite, you're like, oh, that's fucking unreal. Do you do mad shits the next day after oysters? I did, yeah. But then, I don't know, I ain't got by BS. <laughs> but I was just thinking, you're like, you're just eating a little greasy slug from the sea. Like, it's, you know, how's that breaking down your Have body? you had them before? I wouldn't go near them. Just yeah. Cu- just because of experiences that I've had with mussels and shit, which, which I'm definitely allergic to, like. Yeah. Which uh, it took me three, t- three attempts to realize that. But... But I think I think what it is, people get into something, they're into seafood, they like that oceany taste, and then they're on the hunt for like what's the what's the freshest, cleanest, sweetest version of that? I yeah, think is what they're after. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I no, think I that's what they're it. after. I don't get it. Like I got scampi in uh, in Donegal, and it, you know, like you go to some bar in Belfast, you're like, oh, scampi and chips, and they give you like it's like snot fried. Real scampi is like, it looks like a prawn. It probably is a prawn. I have no idea what the fuck it is, but it's like the full body of a prawn, nicely battered, and you eat it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, see when it's like straight out of the sea at the port, you're like, I I get it now. Like, it's so sweet and fucking tasty and everything. Yeah. I was like, I think you just have to have a good. I probably haven't had oysters good. I feel like I'd have a, do you ever see now when they do like a baked oyster? Oh, yeah. And they bake it with like some shit on the top and put a bit of Tabasco on it. I think I'd be more in that. But that's like me with the chips and the bacon and, you know, cheese on top. I oh, know, but the, the the main thing going on there is that it's cooked. Yeah. Instead of just being like an absolute load in your mouth. Mm. It is. Again, it's like ice cream. No straight way to do that. No. You just have to take them and be like, <laughs> oh. some, some real fucking, some real dodge about holding a thing like that. And I, d- I d- <laughs> Did you chew it a wee bit or you just gawk it right no, down? I just gawked her. He gawked the just oysters like up, a motherfucker. Opened up the throat and away down she went. Do you remember that clip we played on here? We should get you on that competition. Oyster gawking. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Gawkins. <laughs> uh, I tell you what I can eat a fucking bucket of, sir. Iron Genie. Yeah, like- <laughs> <laughs> See if you go on a five liter bucket saying for a bunch of Iron Genie balls and I could tear through that. I love that shit. Yeah. Risotto baked into fucking a wee ball? ball. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't Come on, man. Shut up to me, sir. Do you remember my wedding? All the wee fried balls of various descriptions? Yeah. Rice ball, uh, the beef cheek ball. Yeah. They were serious. Yeah. I, I felt like going, just leave me 200 of them. That was French Village, right? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. Good gear. I don't even know if they do, do catering anymore. Lovely gear. Rest in peace. Um, What else? What else went on? Do we hit a new section now? We need a button now. We need some buttons, don't we? Aye. The world's on fire news section. Great news, lads. According to experts, small mickeys are popular again. Could be a lot to do with listening to that Sam Smith music. But nine-inch cocks are out and wieners are back. So if you've got a shore, not a gore, your time has come. Long and thin, it just slips in. Short and thick, it'll do the trick. Personally, I always said all you need is a good three inches to make a woman happy. Once you whip this monster out. Anyway, he's going he's going through a whole thing there, but the main headline it shout out to your man as well. He was in Hardy Bucks. Oh aye. And uh I know Tom O'Malley knows him. But anyway. Small dicks are back. <laughs> I love how you pulled 
of an actual news article about this. <laughs> well, Niall said last week it was be a bit better if this podcast was a bit more curated. You got it, baby. <laughs> Research. You seven. got it. World news brought to you by Colin Gaddis. Small cocks are back. Tiny dicks might become popular again, according to experts. Experts. Uh, experts. Like I, small. Uh, expert. Small dick scientists. Hose. <laughs> Hose up in this bitch. Experts have suggested that a small penis may be des- become desirable at some point in the future, with the concept of the ideal dick size having been a fluid and ever changing one throughout history. Uh, Vice reports. Let me see. Vice reports uh, that whilst Western world is enamored by big penises at the moment throughout history, there are examples of entire periods when a big dick was seen as something to be ridiculed and smaller penises were far more desirable. Real bad man. See if you get me stinking, me freak. Uh, John Clark, a professor in art history and fucking PhD. Okay. Small cock man. PhD in PSDs. <laughs> Pretty small dicks. <laughs> Says that in ancient Greece, a human with a very large geni- very large genitalia is considered to be grotesque, laughable. And if I had to guess, I've heard this before. That's like a racist thing. Because, mm. you know, they're fucking collecting, you know, like gladiator type shit. They're collecting all these fellas from God knows where, Africa or something. And these big black dudes are coming in with absolute fucking iguanas on them. Yeah. And they're being like, look at these. Look at these say fucking, uh, you know, look at these poor fucking slaves that we've got. And they're stinking big cocks. <laughs> And all their wives are in the background. I know, oh, you get away from me. <laughs> That's gr- uh, I hate that. Uh, keep them right away from me. Uh, when you hate that, when you hate that all in your fucking guts and all, when you hate that, uh. <laughs> Classicist Kirk Ormond adds that they're that there remain some examples of negative connotations associated with big penises, even in society today, such as idea of people following their dicks and the racist view of black men being commonly stereotyped with having big penises. Uh, so there you have it. But who knows? Thinking Is everybody well? may flip once more. <laughs> Ending the current obsession with penis size that seems to have taken over our society. Don't get hung up on it uh, at the end of the day because the idea of a bigger, the bigger is better, is just as fragile as any other social norm we've come to accept in society. So big looters are no longer cool is what they're saying. <laughs> big loot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, like, what, what's, gonna, what's the difference? Mm. Do you know what I mean? You spend 98% of your time walking around with your fucking trousers on anyway. It ain't the weapon. It's the marksman, you know? <laughs> Yeah, my shame is he Known shagger. <laughs> World famous shagger. Yeah, and small chilled poet. Shagger laureate of, uh, <laughs> of Ireland. Jake Haney fuck? I'd say so. <laughs> Fellas. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon all those, uh, you know, romantic types probably they either didn't fuck at all or they fucked everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he had a few groupies. So you go now. Can I come your house and ro- write a poem with you? Fucking real bad. Can, all right. <laughs> get, get your mouth around this quill. Jim <laughs> he's not even that old, is he? Did he not, like only die recently. What? Was he had dead years? I don't know. Ah, but you, you know, he's one of them. You think he's from like the 1700s? Uh, no, was he has a 1700s name. He just has an Irish name. No, but Jim Heaney sounds like I'll. Like before time. Yeah, he sounds like a writer. Yeah. Writer or a writer? Both. You say? Oh, <laughs> Both man's riding. <laughs> so small dicks are back, which, you know, uh, you know, I'd hate to be on a night out. Now nah, with fellas, you know, chatting up chicks. Just whispering here, you'll be glad to hear. <laughs> I'm packing a scampi. <laughs> Let me just put you at ease right now. There is no giant cock in my pants. So... Just thought I'd get that off my chest right now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh God! It's a it's a, fashion cycles, man. I know? just I just don't unless someone unless I just don't think it matters to like women. No, the right bit. You might get the odd absolute fucking cum dumpster who's like, listen, I don't care what's attached to it as long as it's a massive cock. Yes, you might get the odd size queen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's it's extremes on both end. But if you're a guy look like me with a hog. Yes. And Tom Hardy, who we all know has 
a scampi. Yeah. They're going to buck Tom Hardy. Do you know what I mean? The cock has nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Unless Again. unless you're just really into cocks. Like, uh, who's the guy? Bit like Mickey with tits. Yeah. You could put two big fat milky tits on a fucking post box and he'd yeah. be like... <laughs> Dave, sorry, maybe not. Maybe not so much, Mickey. Dave, definitely. Oh yeah. Like if you had a Labrador with two big fucking tits, he'd be like, Bleh. "Have you give Dave a bottle of baby oil and a sheep?" He'd be, like, <laughs> <laughs> he'd be all them others, <laughs> like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? I don't really like. Real you, know, say, you know, everyone has preferences. Uh, you know, but you know, if you meet someone and you know you're getting on well with them and stuff like that, I think the genitalia department is kind of, you know, you'll you'll take the L on some things. You know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Be like, yeah, she's quite lacking in the shock department. However, we do connect well. Yeah. Fuck it. Four to ten in the arse, but thoroughly mixed up for in the tits. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's funny when you just boil it down to that, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's just like tits, pick, push, pick, <laughs> face, dice. There we go. Talk a mile or something. Yeah. And who are we to make checklists? You know what I mean? Like, if a girl is dead me, she doesn't be like, yeah, he is quite civil and, you know, he's he looks after me, but he does have the ass of a pregnant black woman. <laughs> But it's good thing you're not going to date anybody. Is yeah. that right? <laughs> exactly. They keep offering their wares to him. And yeah. he's like, no, no, madam. I'm fine as I am. One <laughs> shall be on the side in the guest room. No need for female interference. One after another. I'm just trying to have a peaceful life. Do you hear, you know, such and such fancies you? Fuck, no, I don't have... <laughs> I'm going to die alone. I don't have time for that shit now. Ugh, yuck. I'm just hanging out there for the wife. I'm married to the game, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me and little Wheezy. Bart and Bart. <laughs> I'm on the side side for life. I'm about that side life. You know what I mean? West, I mean. West side. <laughs> <laughs> West side is the best side. Actually, you know, it would be West. It would be West. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever frees up that right arm. I, I've never wanked what a compass like, but I think I know. <laughs> right. Well, do you come right? <laughs> <laughs> the arm's dead. <laughs> I just leaned. I just leaned on something. Of fucking. <laughs> uh, are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. No, no. Oh, sure, it wouldn't matter. Not that day. <laughs> it wouldn't matter with that right. Ah. Ah. That actually does look like I've read that with my left hand right now. But Speaking of genitalia, I remember one time when I was, you know, like in in school and <laughs> and. Uh, Oh, fuck. The, these two, we were like, you know, like you're probably about eighteen or something, going to some yeah. house party, and these two apparently were riding in the in the toilet, and then apparently the guy just completely shut down, like wouldn't talk to this girl, and then word got about the fellas. He's like, well, what's what's wrong? Whatever, you know, whatever, and she's crying. Like he just he just fucking ghosted me there, and uh, he was just like, oh yeah, she has just big dangly flaps, <laughs> and everyone was like, bro. And I was, I was just like, you fucking pussy. What do you like a stag cock? <laughs> huh? Yeah. What, what are you hanging in there for, dick? Yeah, grab a bib and shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you, Get fuck, a, you fucking pussy. Get a pair of chopsticks and mop. up. <laughs> get a couple of fucking... Get a pizza cutter and go to... Get work. a couple of them. <laughs> and get fucking wired in. You know what I mean? You're, <laughs> Get on that ham machine at the Sparns. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hand that fucking turns up and died over. Oh. Yeah, when you're fucking 17, 18, if someone had a vagina beneath their cock and balls, you just be like, oh well. <laughs> oh well. The clip's out again. <laughs> <laughs> What's that Drake song? I'm going in. Uh, what are I buttons on? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I need a fucking break in this book. Oh. Did I ever tell you about, like, I have a bit about it, like, but I'm not gonna do it oh. anymore anyway. But about the fella, the first guy in my school to finger someone, yeah. he was like telling people how to do it, and he M says, M lad, see, all you have to do is go clockwise. <laughs> <laughs> like you're fucking Doctor Strange opening up a portal. 
Like you're cleaning a pint glass, lad. <coughs> Go clockwise. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> great advice great advice from the the teen the teen friends oh yeah oh. it was a big event like when one of the boys finally got to do that you know yeah we'd have a wee party from it all oh buy him a subway i'm a subway a wee bit of hand sanitizer <laughs> crack on lad <laughs> buy, buy one of those things out of fucking is it zoolander and the guy's the hand model oh, yeah. yeah it's like a big fucking it's like a big <laughs> what do you got that term What's that term where they like fucking cryogenic chamber for your hand? Never wash that again, lad. <laughs> a glass chamber around it. Ah! I saw it. Speaking of those, uh, there was a, there was a, you know, one of these like historical fact pages and there was a guy and it was like, this is the iron lung boy or something. And the guy was in like an iron lung all of his life. Jesus. And he's just like, he's in a big fucking thing. Looks like that fucking submarine them boys were in. Yeah. With just his head popping out in a wee pillow. And you're like, the guy was in there his whole life. Fuck. And they had a wee TV and stuff for you. You're like, Jesus Christ, bro. Right. Murder me. Yeah. You know? How much Hollyoaks omnibus is going to watch before you just fucking clock out of that? Oh, Jesus. I don't know. What about that sub raid, sir? Fucking. They see the video that all the right wing media outlets have hijacked now where it's like the guy is talking about how they, you know, had like a bit of a diversity quota. Yeah. So they were like, they didn't want to just hire straight white males. And of course, all but these. But that's a load of. They were probably half joking. Yeah. They were probably half joking, being like, you know, my name's fucking Hamish McWhatever, and this is my Indian friend and his son or whatever. And then he probably jokingly went, you know, we, we've got a bit of diversity going on here. Yeah. yeah. The diversity was like, who, who's got 250 grand? Yeah. That's as far as it stretched. I know. Now, if I made my own bicycle and said, do you want to hop on the back and go around to Asda here? Would you do it? Well, no, I can't ride a bike in general. No, so I'd be riding not. it. I'd be riding it, but I made it out of bits. Would you feel safe? <laughs> no, Me definitely Me driving not. up the main road on a bike? Definitely not. And this fucking lunatic is like, do you want to get in this trash can with me and go down to the bottom of the sea? I oh, will see, since Epstein's Island's closed down now, you know, they have to have something to be at. Closed down like it's barracks. <laughs> 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 I don't think they went out of business, bro. <laughs> I don't think they just fucking... Guys, we're not, we're not making much of a margin here. We're going to have to close down. We're digging some relief here. Yeah. These wains have to go on holidays. Yeah. <laughs> Summer schemes coming on. <laughs> Epstein's Island summer scheme. <laughs> we'll start off at five, five aside at 10 a.m. And then we're making some paper mache. And then you have to rub his cock at four. <laughs> Looks like an egg. It's all right. It's all good. Weinstein's going down at six o'clock. So uh, yeah. get them maches going, boys. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> what are them What are them houseplants? <laughs> <laughs> oh for fuck's sake <coughs> what, an, what an actual living nightmare Oh my Like see when it was happening Like You know I, I can't remember the last time Where there was an event like that Where everyone was like On the live updates Like Oh yeah Looking up what was happening Freaky like And it was so funny too Cause like Do you remember at the Chinese <sighs> meal we had With Ro and Hattie And Katie and all And like Hattie Hattie randomly did this thing Where she brought up something that she thought was similar to it and it had absolutely nothing to do with it in any fashion whatsoever. So, like, I think Ro was saying about, yeah, it's mad how, like, you know, everyone's fucking, like, on top of this now and everyone's talking about it and, like, nobody knows what's happening yet. And then Hattie was like, yeah, it reminds me of, like, you know, whenever Ewan McGregor uh, cheated on his wife with, like, a mistress that he had. And then Ro looked at her and goes... Which I thought was that he just goes, Do you realize what you've just done to this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just, yeah, it's, yeah. But it is, it is, there's something very morbid about it, the way people just fucking, oh, yeah. like, just waiting for these cunts to die. Yeah. Be shouting that pod, like, oh. Uh, because it's, you're either going to get saved or you're not. Yeah. And, it, and you're just going, like, if I know for sure I'm not going to get saved. Can I just kill myself now? Yeah. You know? But you don't want to be the guy who kills himself too early. And then they're like, you know. I'm outside. Yeah. <laughs> but I was listening to it. Like, <clears throat> they were saying, like, you'd have to go get it and slowly bring it up. Yeah. You couldn't You couldn't go down and be like, knock the door and be like, hop into this one. Yeah. You know, they'd have to fucking yank them out. And then, you know, our Lord and Savior, Rick Ross, Rick Rosa, uh, he was like, why don't you just tie a fucking 
cable to the fucking submarine. And I was like, seen that? Ro- Rick, you're, you're just right. Uh, you're just right, brother. Yeah. Tying all cable to it. Get her back up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Get Brock Lesnar in the end of it. Pull out. I would I, like. I would look at the space. You know, if you've been on a Ryanair flight. Like, I would look at the space inside it and be like, "No fucking way, bro. Yeah. No way am I sitting with my. I can't even sit here for an hour. Yeah. Ryanair right. feels like a social experiment. I've got, you know, when you hop on one of those flights and it looks plastic. Did you hear the? Do you remember that famous speech here? Who owns Ryanair? What's his name? Oh yeah, I, I can't. Remember. Ryan something. But anyway, <laughs> I forget his name. But he he was on like the Late Late Show or something, and they were like, "Oh, you were t- you were talking about." doing away with seats and have people standing and he's like yeah and they're like they're like how much more can you get rid of and he goes i'm not talking like you know international flights here i'm talking about like small domestic flights no longer than an hour he yeah goes, of course you would stand and he goes i'll tell you something else they'll be the first to sell because they'll be a pound and I was oh like, i hear enough actually it's yeah. like there'd be nothing like i would actually rather stand on like a 20 minute flight yeah than fucking than sit there cramped inside some fat bitch I'd take a tanner flight, no bother, like. Pound, know. he said. One euro. If it was one euro, 100%. I mean, you'd go to you'd go to Australia for a, one euro. No, oh, absolutely. If it involved standing for 26 hours. I, I'd get me honk. I'd go for a shade for six of those hours. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> yeah, never mind your standing ticket. How much, my, how much, how much can I pay to sit in a shitter? <laughs> to Bali. <laughs> <laughs> you'd pay to sit in a shitter on the way back, probably. Yeah, oh, I. With the fucking tapeworms flying out of your belly, belly. You got that tagli telly going out your ass. <laughs> that is scary, though, the way you go out there and you get that because of the toxins in the water. So, like, even if you have a side salad that's been prepared in that water, you will have the shit stuck. Oh, you will? Just the, It's like Vietnam, just the general atmosphere you're not used to. But the- then I would kind of welcome that, you know, going to a country like that in the first three days is just you getting cleared out and you can really enjoy the holiday. Yeah, well, you feel like it's like a detox? Yeah. Aye, but imagine it being fucking 39 degrees and full-blown humidity and you're getting your your clear out yeah yeah you want a nice cool temperature if you're getting yeah if you're shouting your brains out what usually happens is you're sitting there cramping your legs are dead and there's sweat dripping off your nose from your head no I'm worse onto a, pud- a puddle between your legs and you're just going <laughs> and when you and when you like you, people talk about the wall when they run like a marathon or something you hit a point where you go that has to be more than my whole total body weight. <laughs> You're like, where the fuck is any more of this fluid coming out of? And then sure enough, cramps him. Is that my GCSE results? Steak coming out of me there? Oh, it's fucking, you be getting years of it coming out of you. <laughs> years of it? 12th birthday party at Lands Kingdom. <laughs> but a birthday cake from a 12th? <laughs> it's brutal. Like... You're thinking you go to you go to some uh, center where it's all air conditioned and chilled, and someone's coming in being like, "Would you like a little icy water?" And you're yeah, like, thank you very much. To be fair, there is no worse. There is no rock bottom uh, that a man has to suffer more than a sweaty holiday shite. You yeah. know, if you're in like some sort of a villa. I told you, I, and we always talk about this every week, but I had a bit of an emergency last night. Oh, uh, yeah, you were saying? Just fuck, I don't know where I was in. Thank God I got the toilet in the office now. Were you able to piece it together of what you ate or what you drank that caused that? I think I had some out of date prep meals. Prep? Yeah. Oh, okay. They needed that, and they were a few days over. My, yeah. f- my fault for leaving them. See, I'd be very anal about dates. Oh, it was anal, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, anal is f- all fuck. Anyway, we were talking about Adam Rowe there. We had Adam Rowe over at Laveries. That was, that, was, that was one of the best Laveries of all time. Easy. Having Katie and Harry over as well. Shout out to them. They fucking killed it. The, the stars aligned. We had Adam Rowe over. We recorded a podcast, had a lovely time. Went for a succulent Chinese meal, um, and he's he's you know he's like us, you know what I mean? He's a fucking scumbag too, you know yeah. what I mean? He you know he goes in, and he's like, I'm having all the shits, yeah, pronto, fucking bring it all of it out. I know because usually <clears> me and you go there like, and we're two half to hers. There's no other way to put it. And he gets there, the man had a fucking quarter duck, along with uh, soup, yeah, and, a beef, and then and his a, mince. and a beef curry. I was like, fucking hell, that Patreon stretches me. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Have a word, have a breather. <laughs> have a shit. <laughs> Will you have that? Have a, have a trip to Turkey, lad. Get the band in. <laughs> Fuck me, this lazy Susan tilting the one side. <laughs> <laughs> but, we, uh, but then we did Lavery's night. Uh, I wasn't even on that night. There was too many people on. But, for, but just, just by chance, Mickey was shooting his show in Accidental Theatre. 
Was there something else going on? I can't remember. There was something else going on, another gig or something. But for some reason, there was fucking 25 comedians. It was everybody. Which I didn't think about until after, but like there was a stage where Hattie had just went on, right? And obviously, you know, <laughs> she's heard a lot from me and seen probably on Instagram as well of just Lavery's as a club and, you know, it's packed out every week. It's fucking the go to place in Belfast. Like, and then they fly over and they come down to do it on a Thursday and Hattie gets on and she has a great set. And then Katie was like really nervous in the back and, um, she was like, yeah, I feel like this is like worse than the time I had like my trial at the store in London. And I was like, well, that's because that's a fucking dump. <laughs> you're, in, <laughs> you're in the big leagues now, sister. All right. You're up there with fucking some guy going on being like, oh, the district lawn's a bit of a whiffle, isn't it? Fuck that shit. <laughs> All right. Players play. Anyhow, so. It's a real, it's a real comedy club. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Yeah, we're not serving goujons in the fucking, you know, during the interval and all. Yeah. Anyhow, getting to see. So basically it was like, she was she was on the side and she was like, yeah, I'm really nervous. And I was like, listen. She was on her about, side. She, no, she was, she, was, she was just nervous. <laughs> that I'd like to see. Uh, pretty gig side. <laughs> so she, I was like, listen, don't worry about it. Like. I wouldn't have put you on here just because you're my mate. I know you're going to do well here. So just go on and enjoy it. She goes up fucking cooking on Hob level six whole time. Has a great gig. I was having a few beers because I was, you know, the vibes were nice that night and stuff like that. I was like, listen, I've done my part. I'm saying I'm going to have a few drinks. All I have to do is bring the next act on. I'll be grand. And as I walk past her, you know the way like whenever the next act's coming on and you're walking past each other, you might have a fist yeah. bump, you know what I mean? You don't really speak to each other or anything like that. You just sort of be like, all right, love, yeah. you work away. I, if you were in the front row on I the see Thursday no, I, night. I could see you on the screen saying something or something. Yeah. So if, if you were in the front row on Thursday night, you would have heard me, because I was watching Katie and I was like, ah, oh, she's cooking. I, I, I love to say this. The two guards have done so good. And as I walked on stage before I brought on Adam, and she was walking past me. I was like, I told you to kill it, you dopey bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Green guys. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you, you fucking idiot? <laughs> yeah, everybody killed. That was, that was the night I didn't go on. I was just like, fucking, I'll, I'll let everyone tear away there. Yeah. Fair play. I'll take on for the team. No, it was great. It was a nice night. Um, but yeah, of course they were nervous because if you're going over to another scene and half the fucking circuit is in the green room, of course you're going to be like, oh shit, Like I feel like everyone in the fucking city is watching me right now. Yeah. But I told Katie she should just move to Belfast. I said that to her too. Yeah. She, she put up on a story like might move to Belfast and I was like, do it. Come on over. <clears throat> Her and McCarnigan hook up, you know, that's... I remember I talked to you about this before. I was like, there's a lot of little relationships I'd like to happen for my yeah. own convenience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be handy, it'd be a lot handier if you two were a couple. Yeah. Colin does, like, Indian marriage proposals. Yeah. Where he's, like, pre -booking. And I do the accent, too, for no reason. <laughs> I think that you and McCartney should be... Yes! Fucking... <laughs> Jago face! <laughs> we need a button. We need a wee button that just goes... <laughs> what noise does a lizard make? <laughs> oh, I hurt my head there laughing at that one now. Hold on, give me a minute now to come back and it. And we're back. Welcome to the rage room, where we just have things that fuck us off. You said a term to me earlier, and I nearly reached across you in the car and opened the door and kicked you out. Lab what was that? Labrador boyfriend? Aye. Uh, is that what it is? It's something that's popped up recently on TikTok or sorry, and Twitter. Golden Retriever. Golden Retriever boyfriend, sorry. Right, don't play the video for this now. I'm just going to get some audio to let these whores this. explain. This is a problem. So the hashtag uh, Golden Retriever boyfriend has over 45 million views on TikTok. But what it is about these guys, it's, this, it's essentially a boyfriend breed that is kind of going viral. So when you think about the dog, a Golden Retriever, how would you describe that dog? Outgoing, loyal, loyal, trustworthy, loyal, yeah, e eager um, to fetch, please. Fe fetcher, it's a fetcher. <laughs> yeah. When the ball brings the ball back, best family friend, friend family dog, all that stuff. Relatively easy to train. You see, <clears throat> that's how I would describe your personality. Yeah, because <laughs> I would go like McCann is like you go to a house party. You you might as well be the dog at a house party. 
you just send you into somewhere and you wa- walk around wagging your fucking tail and everyone's like, oh, it's a good boy. It's a good boy. You know, and he might be licking his bollocks the whole time, but you know, he's cute and whatever. I would say if I was to get labeled as a dog, uh, it would be pog energy where I'm cuddly, but uh, it's tough for me to breathe. <laughs> Nah, you'd have to be bigger. You'd, you'd be like fucking British Bulldog. Yeah. Just like, you know, just fucking walking about. A Kita boyfriend from my house was always invisible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just be uh, like an unneutered, uh, you know, Rottweiler who just humps the air all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one, like Golden Retriever are the best. He just got so excited to kiss me and thank me 10 times for cutting up his app. See, this is the thing, right, is... There's words that are being made in the past few years that have negative connotations, but are actually, you know, good <clears throat> personality traits. For example, a simp is a derogatory term, but it essentially means someone who loves their partner. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a simp. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'll never take a partner because no. it's too much effort. Yeah, 100%. On your part, you know what I, I mean? numbers crunch. Too scared. <laughs> The brain's this operation over here, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, he goes like, I'm the brain's this operation, and then starts to play the actual game operation while everyone else does fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. But no, I think, like, like you know, things like that, where you're like, well, you you would want a simp. You yeah. would, but these women don't know what the fuck they want. You know what I mean? It's like, I just want a nice guy to love me and all. And then as soon as they get one, they're like, I just want someone to fucking dump a load in my head and punch me and leave. Yeah. Make up your fucking man! Yeah! But yeah, yeah people you know just, that? people just, you know, gone on the days where you just be like, ah, oh, he's nice. But then there's like, there's there's a doll I seen whenever I looked up this up on TikTok because I was genuinely curious about it. And there's a doll that has like literally about a million followers yeah. and all her videos are being like my golden retriever boyfriend on this my golden retriever boyfriend on that my and I, I'm thinking from the lad's perspective and I'm like you would hate to be like showcased on social media as like do you, you know what I mean there's something weird about that right yeah where you're just like oh I have a boyfriend yeah that, like, he, he's like I actually have to go to fucking work here yeah and you're just taking me sneaky videos of me doing the dishes yeah telling people I'm a godsend yeah Weird, like, you better be getting to slam that ass hard. Yeah. What if you got a Labrador or a Golden Retriever boyfriend and the Golden Retriever hops the fence and fucks a wee pug next door? <laughs> what is he then? Yeah, he's fucking... And what the- dog are you, you know? <laughs> Probably just a wee yappy chihuahua. <laughs> you know, strangers going here, it's like... Nah, nah, yeah. nah. Chihuahua energy you know, is great. Trying to get food out of your bowl all the time. You yeah. got your own bowl, you fat bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Use your own bowl. Yeah. Don't always let me order a bowl and then take some of my bowl. Uh, I offered you a bowl and you didn't want it. I got you your own bowl. So fuck you. You know. <laughs> you get nothing. Listen, you wee chihuahua bitch. Why are you taking up so much of the fucking bed when you're an eighth of my size? Get over there. Get over there. If you girl at me one more time, we're getting you snapped. Yeah. No harm. Hey chihuahua, stop giving off to me that I eat more food than you. Yeah. When I'm four times the size. Do you know what I'm saying? You'd be like a Grand Mastiff. What? Or, or Grand a Grand Mastiff Flash? <laughs> I would. I probably would. I, I probably would be a Mastiff, to be fair. Yeah, that's yeah, me. That's you, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Is that accurate now, do you think? Yeah. Maybe not the baggy one. Oh, I look at that now. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Zors. There he is. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is nice. All right. Uh, or, uh, yeah, yeah. What were you going to say? No, what were you going to say? I was going to say, uh, Red like Setter. Schnauzer, but they're pretty much identical. Yeah, it's the same shit. I was going for, uh, Except Schnauzer's like black, you know? Yeah. But there's a, there's a wee rusty one for you. <laughs> um, Grumpy wee bastard. Grumpy wee bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Past remarkable wee terrier. <laughs> This is actually, uh, this is actually you. There. <laughs> <laughs> you, a bearded dragon. There you go. So we, we, uh, there we go. We, look at that wee beard now. <laughs> Love it. It's actually a spot. Should we get an office fish tank? I would like that, like a, you know, like a Japanese sushi restaurant. Lots of exotic fish floating about. Yeah. 
That mean no no podcast. Does any podcast have a fish tank in the background? I don't think so. I was in Dobby's the other day and I was chatting. I would never. I, apart from it takes you have to take it home and set it up for a couple of weeks. I nearly left the one. Yeah. You have to go get the water right before you bring in the fish. Yeah. You know, but I nearly did it. How much would a, an exotic fish be? The fish themselves, not crazy. Unless you get something really rare and they're like, this is a hundred pounds for one. But most of them are like, you buy a set of four. <laughs> Buy a set of four for about 25 quid. It's like elf bars? Yeah. <laughs> 600 puffs. <laughs> Some of them are cool though. Some of them are very fucking cool. I had a fish one time that lasted about 600 puffs. I got it for free at a fun fair. Uh, Brought it home and put it in a pint glass water and it was gone in about two days. You put it in a pint glass? Yeah, we had, well, we had to buy a fish bowl. Yeah. And it was a Sunday, so we had to wait to the Monday. And their law didn't tell me until a few days into school. She was like, he'll probably take the news really bad. It was a disposable fish, Aaron. Yeah. It wasn't a real one. Yeah. But she, I'd say she fucking killed it because she hates animals. Like, she hates mm. other animals now. Yeah. But she puts up with you? Ever since the incident. <laughs> What's the incident? We had a dog, I had a rabbit, and then died two days later. Slow that down. We had a dog. We had a rabbit and a dog in the house. I don't remember what the breed was. I can ring my sister Colleen and ask her. But the dog was a bad pup, and it fucking mauled the rabbit. And then the dog died like a week or two weeks later. From eating the rabbit? No, probably not from eating the rabbit. I think it was like... <laughs> and the way you're like, hit by a car, but just didn't bother telling me. <laughs> well, yeah. do- dogs will eat things smaller than it. Yeah, but I'm glad it. I wasn't there for that. That's fucking traumatic as fuck. Yeah. No wonder none of my siblings or anything have pets, except for my sister. She has a couple of St. Bernard's. Like, but yeah. That's you. St. Bernard? Yeah. You'd be a St. Bernard. Yeah. We fucking bum bag around your neck and all, full of vapes and traits. <sighs> Put the headphones on. My fucking head sword. Yes, Colin. <laughs> on the way to Leeds now, you know, and you're working away, bless you. Give her like a baby like a big kiss on the old board and thing and thing. And then say hello to Mela. Irie, Irie, man. Cool. Man, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like a pussy baby brave, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Colin. Get crafted and sell some blum buckle. We need a button made. Yes, Colin. <laughs> now there's a couple of uh, Sikh gentlemen there. Yeah. Would you say? Uh, with a very strange accent. Yeah. They got that Jamaican accent. A couple of Sikhos. Sikhos. <laughs> you know, you're expecting maybe, you know, a sort of slightly Middle Eastern accent to come out of. And he's like, Wagwan. Your mom's cam control here is wild. Hello, Colin. Um... Any other any other news before we get out of here? And I play us out with a song? I play us out with a song. I right? want you to sing along. And that was William Thompson at the Christmas do <laughs> singing, We will rock you by Queen in Mexican. <laughs> right, will we will we get out of here? GTO the fuck out of here. Have any more announcements for the people? No, nope. we don't. Nice. Live podcast next week. That's nice. the main thing. Live podcast next week. I got a couple of gigs. You did your big gig. Yeah, it's done. Odyssey Arena. Odyssey um, Arena, Vicar 30th of September, Vicar Street is uh, the 8th of September in Dublin and uh, I will be releasing Scotland dates very soon and London dates. Nice. And Manchester and Liverpool. Nice. Coming up soon. <laughs> that a new one? Very, nice. very nice. indeed. <laughs> Cheers for listening, folks. Get yourself on to the Patreon as well for bonus podcasts. And uh, is that all, folks, now? That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Thanks, now. Thanks, Aaron. Well, thank Thanks for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take care of yourselves, now. Stop, Scott! Yeah! my fucking head. I can't remember what we were laughing at. Bit more action for you this week, now. Love it.